Welcome to NHK World Newsline. The company in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says it's decided to scrap two reactors that escaped damage in the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. They've already made plans to dismantle the other four. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say reactors number 5 and 6 are stable. An emergency power system kept them cool when the disaster struck. But the utilities directors decided on Wednesday to decommission them. The mayor of Okuma, one of the towns hosting the plant, acknowledges that it provided the community with jobs and an economic boost. We will face various problems without a plan, but we must look to the future and try to rebuild the community. TEPCO executives say they won't scrap the reactors immediately. They want to train workers there and test technologies for decommissioning the reactors that suffered meltdowns. There's another reason for them to keep the facilities. The buildings of the two reactors have more than 3,000 units of dangerous fuel rods, and they have yet to decide how and where to dispose of them. They say it may take 40 years to fully close. The government plant. has begun to publicly solicit information on technologies that can help safely remove nuclear fuel debris from the plant. In 2020 or later, Japan plans to start removing melted fuel from the three reactors that suffered meltdowns. The removal of the fuel debris is a core part of the work to decommission the plant. The International Research Institute for Nuclear Decommissioning, or IRID, explained the current plan to some 130 engineers and researchers at a briefing session in Tokyo. The plan is to fill the reactor containment vessels with water to minimize workers' exposure to radiation. Institute officials said they're seeking information on ways to examine the condition of the melted fuel inside the reactors and containment vessels, which have complicated structures. They are also asking for ideas on ways to remove the fuel by remote control. We welcome a broad range of proposals from various fields. The officials said they believe there are numerous technologies in the world that can be applied to this project. Proposals will be accepted in either Japanese or English through the IRID website through January 31st. Nuclear safety specialists have given have been trying to clear up what they say are misconceptions about Fukushima. They took a group of French journalists on a tour of the prefecture. The journalists visited Date City around 50 kilometers from the nuclear plant. They saw how residents are tackling contamination from the accident. They watched officials test dried persimmons. Officials told the reporters that the readings were within the safety standard. Farmers recently resumed shipments of the fruit after a three-year hiatus. A reporter for the Le Monde newspaper says he was impressed to see how hard people are working to ensure safety of local produce. It's important to describe things accurately and challenge the preconceived notions of people abroad. The reporters also visited a former peach orchard that's now used to store contaminated soil. They learned authorities were able to secure the use of the site with the cooperation of talk locals. About the cleanup of Japan's nuclear accident is focused on Fukushima Daiichi, but high levels of radiation in the communities surrounding the damaged plant have kept nearly 150,000 people from returning home. Crews are decontaminating cities and towns, but the work isn't going as fast as Japanese leaders planned. Over the next three days, Nuclear Watch will take a look at the decontamination process from different angles. NHK World's Noriko Okada starts us off by showing us how the government is trying to tackle the problem. A massive amount of radioactive materials were dispersed over land and sea. Nearly three years on, some of those materials have reached their half-life and their toxicity is diminishing.
but the radiation levels are still above safe limits in many areas. Entry is restricted in the orange area. No one can go into the red area. The radiation there is more than 50 times the government's desired exposure limit. The work includes cleaning up land, vegetation, buildings, and roads. Crews are using brushes to scrub rooftops, and they are wiping down walls. They are removing about 5 centimeters of topsoil and gravel, and replacing it with sand and other materials. They are using high-pressure washers to spray down roads. The government has set aside $15 billion for the decontamination effort. And Japanese leaders are planning to increase the budgets even more. But the process is taking longer than Japanese leaders expected. We went to find out why. Yasuhiro Yamagishi is a notary from Iitate. The village is about 40 kilometers northwest of Fukushima Daiichi. High levels of radiation there are keeping him away from his home. He lives with his parents in a nearby city. In the early days of the nuclear crisis, radiation levels were very high in the rain gutters around here. Late last month, workers hired by the government decontaminated Yamagishi's home. They followed government guidelines as they scraped away topsoil and ripped out weeds. They packed the waste into plastic bags and carried it away. The radiation level of the waste was very high. Yamagishi was disappointed with the results. The level on his property was still twice the target, even after the decontamination. He thinks there won't be another chance to clean up his property. I feel like the government is just going through their motions. But the objective of the process should be to ensure safety for the people who want to return without fear. Central government officials have been trying to gain support for their guidelines. Our decontamination follows the same rules. Please understand, we can't apply different rules for different places. The government needs permission from residents before it can decontaminate private property. It's facing resistance. I have no idea if the current procedures are effective in Itate, where radiation levels are higher than elsewhere. In some areas, residents are withholding their consent and demanding a more effective cleanup. Another factor slowing down the decontamination program is the extremely difficult task of deciding where to store radioactive waste. These hundreds of bags contain soil, branches, grass and other materials removed during the decontamination process. And there are many, many more bags around Fukushima. They are piled up at temporary storage sites. In some places, local officials can't even secure a short-term depository. So decontamination work can't begin. In the mid-term, the plan is to start transferring the waste by 2015 to properly sealed storage facilities. But no communities have agreed to host them. 
they want assurance that the permanent storage site will be built elsewhere. Central government officials say they will keep looking for more effective solutions. Various options will be studied to accelerate the decontamination process. It's important to discuss these matters with people in local communities. Japanese leaders are considering spending billions of dollars to speed up the process. But one of the greatest challenges still remains winning the trust of the local residents. ...for nuclear facilities other than power plants has come into effect. They will cover almost 250 facilities nationwide. The rules are much stricter than before, especially for reprocessing plants. Operators will need to take similar measures against severe accidents as those who run nuclear plants. NHK World's Takafumi Terui has more. In total, 248 facilities across Japan will be subject to the measures. The new rules apply to nuclear facilities, such as a nuclear fuel fabrication facility in Tokai, Ibaraki Prefecture. Japan's nuclear regulatory body, the NRA, approved the rules last month in response to the 2011 accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The new safety standards were laid down considering Japan's environmental conditions and other difficulties. I think they are strict enough. The severity of the requirements varies according to the type of facility. For instance, Kyoto University's research reactor in Osaka is required to take measures to prevent accidental emissions of radioactive materials. The NRA's personnel will regularly carry out inspections. The strictest rules apply to two reprocessing plants and seven fuel fabrication facilities. Operators must take measures equivalent to nuclear power plants to prevent serious accidents such as hydrogen explosions and nuclear chain reactions. They need to have emergency measures in place in case of huge earthquakes and tsunamis. Anticipating the new measures, the operator of Rokkasha reprocessing plant in northern Aomori Prefecture has already installed some equipment such as this fire truck. It can douse storage pools for spent fuel to prevent the fuel from melting in the case of a power loss. They also installed this air compressor to help prevent hydrogen explosions by supplying air to lower the hydrogen concentration in the plant in the case of a power outage. But even with these new standards, some local officials and residents who live near these facilities express anxiety. Misawa City in Aomori is in the vicinity of the reprocessing plant in Lokkasho. Currently, the city has an evacuation plan for residents who live within a five-kilometer radius. But they feel that the Japanese government should review the measures. We hope the government will announce the guidelines as soon as possible. Then we can start drawing up the new evacuation plan. I think evacuation plans for residents should be strengthened along with the preparations for starting the plant. But I feel that the only thing taking place is the speeding up of the start of the plant's operation. The accident at Fukushima Daiichi shook the nation. Even with the new, stricter regulations, the anxieties of people living close to nuclear-related facilities have not been entirely quelled, and more steps need to be taken.